Hello. Today, let's talk about becoming witnesses for Jesus. In the Gospel text from Luke chapter 24, we meet two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They have all the right information, but none of the necessary understanding. They know that Jesus was a prophet, mighty in deed and word. They know that their chief priests and rulers delivered him up to the sentence of death and that he was crucified. They know that he died on the cross on Friday before the Sabbath. They had been hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. All of the facts are correct, but they're missing some crucial insights from Holy Scripture and from the Holy Spirit. As they are walking, they are approached and then joined by Jesus himself. But their eyes are prevented from recognizing him. These are some of the Master's own disciples. Why can they not recognize him? And why did Jesus not introduce himself to them? This is all part of God's design, and it is instructive for the church and for us today. So let's watch and see what happens next. Jesus said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. Jesus asks a question, and it almost appears as though he is a student asking them for answers. They explain that there was a man named Jesus. He was mighty in word and deed. He was crucified some three days ago. Some women, whom they know, even claim that he was risen from the tomb. It is not long before we see that Jesus is the real teacher here, and they are the students. Luke 24, beginning with the 26th verse, Jesus says, Oh, the 25th verse. Jesus says, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? At this point, Jesus begins teaching them from the Old Testament, from the books of Moses, like Genesis chapter 3, from the prophets, like the prophet Isaiah chapter 53, and from the Psalms, like Psalm 22. Jesus explains that the word of God has always foretold that Messiah was coming, and that he would accomplish his purpose of redeeming and saving by means of his own sacrifice, his suffering, death, and resurrection. The walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus was about seven miles, or almost two hours. Jesus was able to provide a good deal of instruction to his students. Perhaps we would even call them catechism students. As they approached Emmaus, they invited Jesus to stay with them and get something to eat. Once again, it looks as though they're the leaders. They're, they're taking the place of the host. But when they recline at the table, it was Jesus who was the real host. He took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Suddenly, everything was clear. Their eyes were opened. Suddenly, they realized that this was their crucified, now risen Lord. Of course, there had to be suffering, a suffering Messiah. There had to be a crucifixion and a risen Lord. God had declared it for hundreds of years in his scripture. Now they understood. This is the Messiah, the Savior. This is our Jesus who has come to redeem Israel, but not at all in the way that we had thought. He has taken the sin of the world. He has conquered death and the devil. The Lord Jesus, who had been crucified, is now the very one who is walking with them, who is instructing them, and who is now providing them with the sacred meal. Yes, Jesus is Savior, but yes, Jesus is their Savior. With that, Jesus vanished. And with that, they rose immediately from the table and returned seven miles back to Jerusalem to make witness to the disciples what they had experienced on the road and in the breaking of the bread. 
These two disciples on the road to Emmaus had just received the first Lord's Supper from the resurrected Jesus Christ. And Christ had given an example, a model, not only for them, but for the whole church and for us to follow. For over 20 centuries, the people of God have followed this example. That is, Christian instruction is given that explains who Jesus is and what he has done based upon the Holy Scriptures. This instruction, we could call catechism, is followed by the administration of one's first Holy Communion, when we first receive the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. That was your experience too, I suspect, as it was mine, instruction from Holy Scripture and reception of the body and blood of Christ. This is not done once in a lifetime, but is a pattern that Christ has left for us to live throughout our lives every week on the first day of the week, on the day of the resurrection of our Lord, we journey to the Lord's house and once again we receive instruction. Using the mouth of the pastor, Jesus Christ teaches and preaches his divine word to us. He gathers us around his table and using the hands and the mouth of the pastor in accordance with his command, bread is taken, blessed, broken, and distributed to us. And the cup is blessed and given to us. The divine body and blood of Jesus Christ given to us to eat and to drink. Our spiritual sight is made clear again. Our eyes of faith are made strong again. The word of Christ has penetrated and blessed us. Our sins are forgiven. Like those first disciples on the road to Emmaus, we are energized to go quickly and to relate our experiences to others. You will tell how you recognized him when he spoke his inspiring word to you. And you'll testify how you believed in him when he gave you the sacred elements of his body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the promise of your eternal life. Just like those first disciples on the road to Emmaus, you will tell that all the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, all that he did, he did also for you.